Please subscribe, like, and share. It really helps us out. And of course, if you have any questions, comment below and we will answer you as soon as we can. Hi, and welcome to another video in our series on IGCSE Economics. This is Unit 5, Part 1. In today's lesson we will be learning about government economic policy. If you haven't seen our previous videos, click on the card above. Welcome to another unit in our economic series. If you were in my class, it would be a new year as well. We have looked at the individual and firms in the economy. Now it is time to look at the public sector in an economy. Or in other words, the government. The public sector is a major producer, employer and consumer in many modern economies. Public sector organizations include Central and local government authorities and their administrative departments government agencies responsible for the delivery of public services and public corporations. In addition to civil servants, public sector employees will usually include members of the armed forces, the police and judiciary, teachers, doctors and nurses. How does a government spend its money? Government spending or public expenditure accounts for a large share of total spending or aggregate demand in many economies. This can broadly be divided up into Current expenditure This is recurring spending including the wages of public sector workers, state pensions, welfare payments, and the running costs of government offices Capital expenditure This is investments in long-lived assets such as computer equipment, roads, dams, airports, schools and hospitals It must be noted that Public expenditure is likely to benefit many private sector firms. So, why do governments spend money? A government can use its spending power to provide goods and services that are in the public and economic interest, such as street lighting, national parks, universal education and health care, and affordable housing. Invest in national infrastructure such as road and railway networks, and airports. They can also support agriculture and key industries to provide jobs and output, and to invest in staff training, new machinery, and the research and development of new products. Manage the economy by boosting total spending during an economic recession to help firms and reduce unemployment. Reduce inequalities in incomes and help vulnerable people for example by providing welfare payments to people and families in need. This diagram is called the circular flow model of the macroeconomy, or the bigger economy. We aren't looking at just one market anymore. We are looking at all markets. It shows firms and households and their relationship to each other. For instance, in the factors market, household provide the factors of production to firms. In return they receive, wages, rent, interest and profits. From a firm's point of view, these are the costs of doing business. But in the product market, firms sell goods and services to households. In return, they get revenue. From a household's point of view, this is their consumption expenditure. This diagram is simplified, because it doesn't include the impact of governments and banks on the economy. Aggregate demand for goods and services equals consumer spending plus business investment plus public spending plus spending on exports by overseas residents. Aggregate supply of goods and services equals gross domestic product. What is a government's macroeconomic objectives? Firstly, low and stable price inflation. High inflation will reduce the purchasing power of people's incomes cause hardship for people on low incomes, increase business costs, make goods and services produced in the economy less competitive, high and stable employment, high unemployment will cause hardship for people who lose their jobs, reduce spending on goods and services and cause production to fall, increase public spending for welfare payments to support the unemployed and their families. This will mean that other public spending may be cut. Economic growth in the national output Growth will boost firms' revenues and profits 
Boost output, incomes, jobs and living standards. Boost investments by firms in new capital and businesses. Increase tax revenues for government to finance its spending. Finally, a stable balance of international payments and trade. If a country has a deficit on its balance of payments with the rest of the world, it may run out of foreign currency to buy imports. The value of its currency may fall against other foreign currencies and make imports more expensive to buy, this will cause import inflation. Fiscal policy is the amount of government spending in the economy. Changing the total level of government spending and taxation can have a significant impact on the aggregate demand for goods and services, and therefore on output, employment and prices. Changes to fiscal policy can be labeled in two ways. Contractionary fiscal policy. This is when we cut public spending and raise taxes. And expansionary fiscal policy. This is when we increase public spending and cut taxes. Some problems with fiscal policy include too much public spending can cause inflation. Increases in taxes on incomes and profits can reduce incentives to work and enterprise. Public spending can crowd out private spending. But remember, public spending has to be financed. This can be by raising taxes from household and corporate incomes, or by government borrowing from the private sector. An increase in borrowing will raise interest rates. Now let's look at monetary policy. Monetary policy is basically the government controlling interest rates through the central banks. Again, we can have contractionary monetary policy, this is where there is an increase in interest rates to reduce consumer borrowing and increase savings. Higher interest rates can also increase the exchange rate and reduce prices of imported products. We also have expansionary monetary policy, this is where the government reduces interest rates to increase consumer borrowing and reduce saving. Lower interest rates can also reduce the exchange rate and reduce prices of exported products. The last government policy for today are supply-side policies. Supply-side policies attempt to boost the productive potential of an economy and increase aggregate supply. The idea, to increase growth, is to increase jobs, increase incomes, and also to lower inflation. Examples of supply-side policies are Selective tax incentives for example tax breaks to encourage investment. Selective subsidies for example to support development of new technologies. Improving education and training to raise skills and productivity. Labor market reforms to restrict trade union power. Competition policy to outlaw and competitive behavior. Removing barriers to trade to increase choice and competition. Privatization transferring public sector activities to private sector firms. Better regulation simplifying or removing old and unnecessary regulations that otherwise raise costs and restrict business activity. Sometimes, policy objectives can conflict. Let's run through some examples. Raising public spending, cutting taxes and interest rates to boost demand and employment will increase inflationary pressures and spending on imports. Another example would be cutting public spending, Raising taxes and interest rates to control inflation will reduce demand and therefore increase unemployment and reduce economic growth. Still more where there is little conflict would be. Keeping price inflation low and stable will make domestic goods and services more competitive. Demand for them will rise at home and overseas. This will help to improve the balance of trade and will boost jobs, incomes and tax revenues. Or in another example. If workers expect inflation to remain low they are less likely to push for big wage increases. This will boost the demand for their labor. And if firms are more confident in the future they are more likely to invest in new capacity for growth. In contrast, rising inflation raises costs and lowers profits. Thank you for watching our video. Please like, subscribe and share. And comment below so we can clarify things for you.